then, guys, how's it going? Uh, no Maze, no Liam, no anybody. It's just me tonight. It's just me tonight. Uh, take that whatever you will. I mean, on one hand, it won't be entertaining for you to see just how brainwashed some people are by Twitter and the media, because that's entertaining for me. So I'm assuming it's entertaining for you as well. Um, so, yeah, just me. Um, and you know what? Let's just have some fun with it, guys. Let's just, as, as always, as you know, no nonsense, common sense. Don't resist it. You've just got to embrace it. It's uh, for those on the video, see this lovely Inter Milan. I want to say seventeen, eight, mm, no, eighteen, nineteen, training top. In fact, no, it isn't. It's nineteen twenty. Yeah, nineteen twenty, training top. Very nice. So now it could have been a home kit or a third kit, but obviously not good for me because it was reduced um, when I went to the San Siro with my mates. So yeah, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Um, yeah, there we go. Look all right today. No, oh, never get tired of looking at you, George. <laughs> stop, stop. Come on. Um, right then. So hopefully you will have seen the one the other day that I did with Tom Scotting. Brilliant, brilliant guy. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Uh, and we'll just get straight into it today with this weekend's fixtures, starting with Tottenham Hotspur versus Wolverhampton. Um, to be honest with you, this is one of those games that I think everyone is going to slap down a Spurs win, and rightly so. Uh, Tottenham should be winning that, um, and they probably will do. But I mean, Wolves, Wolves are one of those teams where, you know, even if they're absolutely shocking, they'll still they can they've got a nil nil or a one nil disgusting performance in them I don't want to take you know take anything away from them because it's effective and I wish that other teams Leeds included had a bit more of that in it, it you know in their armory um but it hasn't been a great season for the yam yams um particularly that opening day one against Leeds because going one nil up away I get it, it was early on didn't hold on Leeds get back into it they end up losing and Fulham Fulham riding high after the Liverpool game, granted, and they're no mugs like Mays wants you to believe or like Liam wishes, uh, although now they've got Leno, he might give them a bit more respect. But no, um, Fulham riding high on that way, but Wolves absolutely battered them. And they've, they, you, you've got to understand that it's all well and good going, oh, well, we're playing well. and we're doing... You need to win a couple of games as well, um, particularly at the start of the season, because my theory guys I'm sure you've heard many a time me say is that 50% of who's got who goes down so let's say that's one to two teams a season is decided by the media and you might think George come off it mate come on it's 16 minutes past nine on a Thursday night wrong there's that there's always a team that's likely just to be way worse than everyone else and everyone acknowledges that but I personally feel um if you're earmarked at the start of the season as one of those teams that are going to be in trouble, seeps into the psychology, never mind the players around the club. I think that the communication becomes much more defensive from managers and PR reps and comms teams. I think moving forward, when people look at next season's kit sponsor or, you know, um, what players to bring in that becomes a little bit tentative a little bit negative and it all seeps through into some of the players where the belief of all right we're in the Premier League now goes and you've got the media battering them every week saying they're down um, so with that in mind I think that's why Wolves could really do with a win maybe not against Spurs maybe not but the following week against Newcastle must win for me if they don't beat Spurs as for as for Tottenham um, Mm, I think comprehensive victory against Southampton, real, real quality and showed a real bit of um, grit and determination to come back against the Chokes. But I mean, Chelsea hardly flying. Chelsea hardly flying. I think this is... in OK, not in terms of, of, of performances and stuff, but in terms of players and starting 11, I think this is the worst Chelsea XI since... 17-18 when they finished fifth and Conte was sacked for me for me it is so Tottenham should have been doing that but hey 
draw away at Stamford Bridge is not going to do anyone any harm. So perhaps perhaps I shouldn't be so critical. Um, so again, I haven't got much to say really. I'm sure I'm the same as all of you. I'm expecting Tottenham to win that. Palace versus the Villa. Um, Stevie, I'll start with Villa. Stevie come under a lot of pressure, um, as everyone knows, and it's about time too. Um, there was that run of games at the back end of last season that nobody reported on and nobody was aware on. But I think they they drew with Leeds. I think they, they beat Everton. They lost to Newcastle. They lost to Watford. And it was like those games, like that should have been minimum 10 points at a push nine. But I think in the end, they got two or four or something. Not good enough. I think the money they've spent, and I'm not saying oh, they've spent much, but they've spent it wisely on good signings with the exception of Bailey, who's one of them where it either works or it doesn't, and Morgan Sanson, again, one of those where it works or it doesn't. Everyone saw what Ings did at Southampton. Everyone knows that Watkins has got it in him if if, if he's got the confidence. Buendia was class at Norwich. Everyone, There is a player in there. Coutinho, world class. Dina, last season, absolutely phenomenal. Diego Carlos, shame, because I would have loved to have seen him not get injured, but he's out now. Um, but there's been all this, this wherewithal with, with Tyro Mings and... Win against Everton, fine, but I, I, I would, I think Aston Villa could do with, with the win against Palace and looking forward after that. Maybe, maybe, get getting a result there, going into the West Ham game the following week and being confident. But I think now is the time. I know they were, Wendy and Et Al were good against Everton, but this is the time now. A few games in where this season particularly, people are going to be looking at Coutinho and Watkins and Bailey and Buendia um, and those sorts of players, and Dino, and going, well, these players aren't performing, and they'll, they'll get battered, of course they will. At the end of the day, it's them kicking the football. But at some point, that will divert to Steven Gerrard, and it will be a question of, well, why aren't you getting a tune out of these players? So it'll be interesting to see, see how that develops. Palace, Miss Gallagher. Simple as that, Miss Gallagher. Um, but what a performance the other day against Liverpool. What a performance. I mean, set up brilliantly. Anderson, absolute masterclass on Darwin Nunez. Um, <laughs> loved it. Absolutely loved it. And Mays, of course, still hiding, still crying. Um, he said it ruined his birthday. So you only turned 30 once and Mays' was tarnished. So well done, Joachim Anderson. Thank you very much. Um, I... <laughs> I said this to, to Tom Scott on, on the podcast the other day that I hope you've all listened to, and that's that you get a chance to beat a Liverpool, a Man City, a Man United, an Arsenal, a Chelsea, a Tottenham. Like those, as, as individual teams, not like you beat one of them every season. As individual teams, you probably get the chance once every three, four seasons, if that. And when the chance comes, like with, just like with Fulham against Liverpool on the opening day and Palace the other day, you, as a fan, you really want to seize it because it's a great point. You didn't expect it, but the way the game unfolded, going 1-0 up, Liverpool down to 10 men, you've got to see that out, surely. Surely you've got to see that out. And so for Palace, that's one. Po- that's the first point of the season gained, but they're probably looking at that thinking, well, we, we should have had all three. We should have had all three. They're at home. But I'm going to be, I, I, I actually see a Villa win here. I'm just going to keep saying it till it comes through. Dean, your free kick, 1-0 Villa. The Toffees and Forrest. Um, I'm exhausted of, of Forrest already. Um, the thing is, I remember it happening to Leeds when we got promoted, and, and I'll be honest, guys, didn't like it one bit. Did not like it one bit. Nottingham Forest and um, Bournemouth. Uh, and Fulham have got as much right to be in the Premier League as everyone else. Hold them to the same standard. I used to have, like opening. You'll hopefully you'll remember our first game back with that four three at Anfield, and I was like, oh, "Well done, Leeds!" As if it's, you know, as uh, as if it's just like some little children trying to set you, trying to set a university exam, and they've obviously got no chance. But you applaud them for having a go. Get real. Forest have now spent, I think it's over a hundred million um, on players, good, good players, decent players. Got to get results now. Got to get results because for them, I don't think. Yes, they take seventeenth. Yes, that's a good season. 
But as I said a few moments ago, you got to hit the ground running. And Everton will be one of those games that have been earmarked for them to go in, get the points early doors. So for me, with Forest, you look at their fixtures so far, I thought Newcastle, they were an absolute disgrace. Um, yeah, disgrace, said it, and I'll say it again. Uh, West Ham, <laughs> how West Ham didn't win that, I'll never know. But get the job done, you, 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 you get the points. And if they could get, get, get a win against Everton, a fantastic start, a fantastic start. And as much as I'm fed up with them, they're shutting me up. They're shutting me up. Everton deserve to go down. And I absolutely, I, 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 I said before, went to Union Liverpool, absolutely loved, love Everton, loved them as a football club. Um, you know, the real fans supported Everton uh, and they had really likeable players, in my view, for quite some time. They had the likes of Seamus Coleman, who I think everybody respects what he's done in the game. Um, Richarlison, um, Bernard, when Marco Silva signed him, I loved him. Andre Gomez, obviously Portuguese connection. Even Ben Godfrey, I thought was a good sign. And when Don Carlo came, I was so excited. I thought he was going to be the man to take them that next step. But he did. Like when James Rodriguez came in, I was like, right, they're not going to get like the let, Champions League. Let's not let's let's not be silly. But they they could get European football again, which they hadn't done for for quite some time since that Lukaku season under Ronald Koeman, I think. So, but it's just gone. It's just gone like that. I mean. Lampard, I don't know, surely he, 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 I was talking about Stevie, he's got to be under immense pressure now. He brought in the players, I get it, he came in late, he had his January fine. I understand maybe they don't have as much money as they used to spend in, but goodness me, and I'm going to say again, Anthony Gordon is not the answer. He scored, I think he scored four goals for Everton in over 50 appearances. And I'm not having it that you say in Everton are a rubbish team, so that's a good return. For me, it isn't. Gordon, who could be a good player, isn't that finished article yet. Of course he's not. He's, he's a very, very young man. For me, this year, a good season for Gordon is six goals and six, seven assists. That isn't going to keep him up. They need, they need someone to hit minimum 10. Calvert-Lewin, God knows he's... I shouldn't joke, but God knows if he's going to walk again because there doesn't seem to be any clarity on. He's the same mould as Patrick Bamford. He's he's injured. Oh, he's back again. Oh, he's out. For, he's out for ten years. He's back again. Um, and Everton, Chelsea, fair enough. They they stopped it being embarrassing. Villa, that was a game. You're thinking right, should have a chance. No, not for me. And Forest must win. Must, 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 must win. If they don't beat Forest, then I, I think that could be it for Frank. Not in terms of getting sacked, but he will then be, he'll go like that in the odds. He'll be up there, one of the favourites to be sacked. Um, I'm, I'm rightly so, to be honest. I've said it before. Rafa Benitez and Richarlison kept Everton up last year, not him. They got that win against Man United when Man United were just trying to throw away Champions League. Apart from that, I've just not been impressed with, with, with anything really. Um, so yeah, on to the next one then. The West London derby is, for the first time ever, I've heard it referred to. Fulham versus Brentford. Um, Fulham love it, love it. Really, really rate Marco Silva as a manager. I think he gets a lot of unfair criticism, and I don't think he gets the respect that he deserves. At Everton um, taking them to. Granted, it wasn't the best finish in the world, but I think it was the highest they'd had for a number of years. Um, and they, they haven't had finished as high since he left. <laughs> I thought Pereira was a good signing. I thought they've tried to be cute and make smart, sensible in in every every rematch. I mean, Leno, it's only a matter of time before Rodak goes to the bench and Leno comes in, good signing. Um, yeah, I mean, I... I respect it I, again, but I'll go back to it. Fulham, Fulham fans happy that they didn't get beat by Liverpool, but surely upon re reflection, you're looking at that going the way that game tied out. Um, should have won that. Should have they should have won that. Um, and last week, <laughs> um, last week against Wolves, Mitro has that chance to score that penalty, get three goals, equal his tally for the last time they were in the Prem. And just bottles the penalty. It was a terrible penalty. Terrible. So 
for Fulham, it's a bit, a bit of an omen and are in like this. They start, they started well. They've caught, they've earned the respect of neutrals like myself. But now we're moving into a zone of oh, okay. You've shown us you can grind out a point and a result against a decent Liverpool team. People are now expecting you to do the same. You've mended rods for your own back, which is fine. Like I'm not saying oh, they should have lost to make it. Of course I'm not. But what I am saying is that. We've seen what they can do. They've, they've done that. So they should be much more prepared and much more psyched up and much more confident in their own capabilities to go and win football matches like the one against Brentford. As for Brentford, goodness me, I mean, they're just not going to go away, are they? I kind of hoped they get relegated, but they, it just doesn't look like they're going to. Um, a lot of people, myself included, had said that Ericsson going, that'd be it. that would be the pin in the Brentford balloon. But no, I mean, you can't really knock it. I mean, we'll come on to the Manchester United result in a bit, but the 2-2 draw away at Leicester, I mean, 13 teams would take that at the start of the season, I think. I think they'd look at that and they'd see Leicester and they'd go, yeah, all right, 2-2 draw. Showed that they can score goals, showed that they can keep it tight if need be. Um, fine, you just get that. You Sometimes you just have to nick the point and run. Manchester United, I mean, United were awful and we'll, we'll come, we'll, I promise I'll come to them when we do Man United Liverpool, but we mustn't forget how well Brentford did and we mustn't take that away from them. They were brilliant, they were aided by some absolutely shocking football, but they were brilliant on the counter, they were efficient and you just think Brentford have shown that they can be ruthless as well as smart and this game against Fulham is one of those where, yes, you would expect them to win because newly promoted team. And according to Mays, everyone who plays in the championship is a Sunday league player. And, you know, he thinks all of them have other jobs and earn £30 a week playing football. But come on, guys, we know that just isn't the case, is it? Uh, so that's Mays for you. But they almost, it almost doesn't really matter because for Fulham, They've got two points. They should have four. Some could say they should have six. And for Brentford, they've got four points where at the start of the season, I would have said they'd had none. So this is going to be one of those games where Fulham could do with a win more. Brentford, I think, I just think Brentford have got the bit between their teeth at the moment. So I'm going to have to go for a Brentford win there. Going to have to go for a Brentford win there. Leicester versus Southampton. This is exactly the sort of mid-table Premier League game um, that is never going to be on TV. It is like that's the game where you just like, but there will probably be some unbelievable goals scored in it, and therefore it'll make it into the archives. Oh, big breath before we just go on to it. Leicester, if I, you know, I'm gonna have a bit of agua. Brendan Rogers comes in. And he gets Leicester playing some nice stuff. First season, full season under Rodgers. Beat Southampton 9 0. They're coasting it. They're coasting it. I think there's one point, they're like eight. They're like, they were like third or third, they were like eight, nine points away from fifth. And everyone's like, but the attitude in the team straight away was we've got Champions League. We'll just, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just say, <laughs> thank God they fell away. Fell away. I think they lost something like eight, nine, ten of the last twelve games, and they just went like that, dropped like a stone. Next season, they were there at the start again. Everyone going, oh yeah, they'll get fourth, they'll get fourth, they'll get fourth. Again, dropped like a stone into Europa League. Should have gone far in that, didn't. Go into the Conference League. There's no excuse for them why they didn't win that. There's no excuse for them why they didn't win that. Yes. Look, I love Mourinho. Roma are a much better team than people in this country give them credit for. But come on, like, lest I think I'm trying to think. I think maybe the second leg was second leg was was at home. I think it was only one nil. They've got every chance in the world to do that. Get nowhere near it. Nowhere near it, guys. Drop out the Conference League. They're out of Europe totally now. And you look at their starts of the season, and you've just got to ask yourself. Brentford, they really needed to win that. They didn't. Arsenal expect them to lose that. Pressure's on now. 
Southampton do get a rough ride. I'll come on to them momentarily, but they, they should beat Southampton for me. And I'm going to say that they do. I'm going to go Leicester 1-0 Vard's penalty. Um, Southampton, they're that, they are the, the... Southampton and what they've become is... That's the nighttime monster. That is, you know, the reds under the bed kind of thing where if you're not one of the big, big, big clubs, and by that I mean financially, your team comes up, pop it about for a few years, do well, they get to a stage, but then they're they're almost then part of the furniture. So you slowly lean back and take it easy. Players go, some players come in, not the same, not the so, we'll be all right because we've always been here. And this Southampton for me is sleepwalking into getting relegated. It might not be this year and it might not be next year, but I just think it's the cycle going round now. They came up and they had an ambitious team, everyone will remember Lambert, Schneidlin, Lalana, Luke Shaw, Jose Font. Um, Alex McCarthy, um, you know, really, really, really hungry, thirsty, Nathaniel Klein, thirsty team. They then lose a little bit of that. They lose a little bit of that spine, but they bring in other players just as good. Sadio Mane, Dusan Tadic, Oriol Romeu. I know he's still there, but Romeu was brilliant when, when, when he first arrived. Um, Tadic then goes, and then it was just almost like a, a Danny Ings or bust. Ings had a fantastic season. Danny Ings then went, and they replaced him with Adam Armstrong. And Armstrong and Che Adams, between them, might be able to get the job done. But you're now at a point where everyone's like, well, if Ward Prowse doesn't score a free kick, or if we don't score from a set play, everyone... You're sort of asking Kyle Walker-Peters to do something from fullback. Um and it's a shame, really, because for me, growing up and stuff with Letizia and, and players like that, and James Beattie, they were always part part of the furniture. But I think they just sleepwalk into it. Um, I'm, I'm not. I haven't seen much from them so far this year either. Uh, last week against Leeds, oh, good grief, um, did really well to get back in at two 0 down. You've got to respect that. But Leeds were absolutely terrible defensively. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, and the first week they're dispatched by Spurs, which you can't knock them for. They're going to, most of the time they're going to lose that game. But they would have looked at Leeds and said, we should win that. They're at home. Leeds struggled last year, should win that, didn't. And now here we are with Leicester. I don't see them getting anything. Right, Saturday night, the big game, Bournemouth, the Cherries versus Arsenal, the Gunners. Arsenal should win and win comprehensively. And if they don't, there'll be questions asked by me. You know that. You know that, guys. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to let Liam get away with. You know, a, God, I don't know. An own goal that deflects off someone's knee and goes in, and Liam then tries to tell me that it's quality, quality football and it's grinding out results because it isn't. Arsenal have had a brilliant start. We'll start with them. I mean, Leicester, that's the sort of game where you look at that and think they could easily slip up. That could easily have been 3-1 Leicester and you wouldn't have been surprised looking at your phone or getting that update. I think they've made, again, sim- similar to Fulham, but obviously different here. They've made smart signs. Jesus, good signing. Zinchenko, I'm still not wholly convinced by in the long run, but he started very well. I also feel that in terms of that sort of They've, I've seen a bit of maturity so far. I think players like um, Ben White and uh, Gabriel as, as, as a two, Saliba, I know Ben White played right back, but I think as a two or as a collective defensive unit, they've matured a little bit. I hope Ramsdale just stops doing needless backflips and goading away fans and just focuses on what on what he needs to do, which is keeping clean sheets and keeping Arsenal in games when when they're under the cosh. Because my issue with it last season, for those of you who've been listening, is there was this amazing run that Liam and Mays kept droning on about. Go back and listen to it. I think they played something like Newcastle when they were terrible, Burnley, Leeds, Norwich, Southampton, Aston Villa, 
um, Tottenham under Nuno Spirit Santu when he was literally on the rocks. Everton, Brighton, and like they played like ten, and they should win. They should have won all of those games, and I think they won seven or eight of them. And don't get me wrong, if it was easy, everyone would do it. But Liverpool and Man City set the bar for first and second. Tottenham have got a better manager than Arsenal. Chelsea have got a better squad. Maybe XI wise, if you go eleven v eleven. There are a few areas where Arsenal are better than number nine, obviously, being one. But that's where the bar is. It's no good saying, oh, well, oh, you know, it's a project. You either get there or you don't. And for me, Arsenal should comprehensively win this game. If they don't, I think there'll be questions. Let's just look at Arsenal's next few games. Bournemouth, Fulham, Villa, Man United, Everton, Brentford. That, that's, the, that's the next... Um, that's the next six games they should get 15 points minimum for me if they want to get top four it's important they get the, they get those 15 and then after that that's when you can start saying right we'll, we'll just sit on what we've got but then they, 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 you've got to get the points you've got to get the points as for Bournemouth um, a shame for them because I, I I just think after that win against Aston Villa at the start of the season that heaped immense pressure onto Stevie they're flying high, but then they just get a slap from Man City, which was always going to happen. City are a brilliant team. Bournemouth know they can't compete and probably will never be able to, unfortunately for them. But that, I think it's important with games like that for newly promoted clubs. How do you respond to that? Because you'd like to think that Scotty Parker would say exactly what I've just said in terms of, you know what, guys, we're never going to beat them. We kept it at four. Some teams are going to lose six, seven, maybe even eight this year. Let's just go at it and let's, because Arsenal are there to be got at. Everybody knows that. Let's go at them, try get Xhaka sent off, and we'll see what happens. Or it's the where players within themselves go, well, God, this is the premier. Maybe I'm not up to it here. We're, I'm not up to it. He's not up to it. We're just not good enough. We're going to go down. And then caveat that, sorry, add to that the media saying that you're down as well. Makes you think, doesn't it? Nice little uh, reference there for those that will get it. Um, so, again, Arsenal, I think, should, at least two goals. At least two goals they should win by the arse. Uh, I shouldn't say that. The Gunners. Um, right, Super Sunday or Bang Average Sunday, as I've often called it. Um, Leeds, Leeds, Leeds versus Chelsea. Um start with Leeds would have taken what we've had at the start of the season would have taken it but that Southampton game did frustrate me because that that was almost a, a back down to earth moment that opening game against Wolves Wolves are a really 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 horrible team to play against particularly for us in our time I think first season we came up we lost 1-0 to them both times last season um, we drew with them at the start. Rodrigo scored a penalty late on. And then, of course, we're 2-0 down. Jimenez gets sent off and then we end up winning 3-2. Some would say that changed our season and flipped it round. They're talking absolute rubbish. We would not have got anywhere near that result without that red card. And we still went on to nearly dropping. Um, but what that did do was it got us three points at an invaluable time. And sometimes you've just got to take the points and run. And that was one of those times. But this year started the window really well, as I've said, made some really, really good positive ac um, acquisitions in which you're looking at Aronson, you're looking at Christensen and thinking if this works, they're absolute steals. And from Aronson's point of view, it looks like it works. Christensen's got a lot of work to do. I think Tyler Adams and Mark Rocker together will grow to being a very, very good pair. Um, Sinister, obviously, we signed, unfortunately for him. He's been injured, so he hasn't really gone. But we're, I'm, I'm hoping he can be he can be a real maverick for us and, and unlock the door in games that we're struggling in. But we, we, we still need a fullback and we still need a striker. Patrick Bamford, if let's say we're to play 38 games a season, will be starting, start and play full 90 minutes or there or thereabouts, 17 of those games at a push. At a push. 
he'll feature in other ones, but it is a certainty he will get injured. Some players have that. It's not it's not a slight on him. It's not that he's doing anything wrong. I know people that have had it for a time in my life. I had it as well, where you just get muscle injuries. You get cramps. Psychologically, you're thinking, I'm not going to go in for that tackle because if I do, I'm going to get injured. I'm not going to go up for that header because if I do, I get injured. And almost you become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So Bamford is going to be in and out. And Joe Gelhart or Joffe, as much as I love him and I think he's brilliant, you cannot pin your hopes of, of achieving staying up on a 19, 20-year-old lad. You just can't do it. I think he'd be fantastic coming off the bench. I think he'll get quite a few goals this year if he does do that. And I really rate him. But for me, looking at this game against Chelsea, I just don't want it to get embarrassing. I'm honest enough to say I don't think we've got a chance in hell of beating Chelsea. I just don't want it to get embarrassing because that was our problem last year. People saying, oh, goal difference. Goal difference is an extra point at the end of the season when the cookie has crumbled and the chips have fallen. It's as simple as that, guys. It's there for a reason. And we, last year, in certain games, Manchester City, Liverpool, that Arsenal game when we had to play loads of kids, we just bending over backwards for all these teams to come and just absolutely rip us to shreds. That month of February, 21-22 goals, I think new record for, for goals conceded. Things like that. Yes, you can say it was Bielsa's tactics and the way he set us up for games, but things like that, there's also a little bit that uh, of you know gamesmanship and now. And I think Jesse Marsh, to be fair to him, understands that, and that's why he's tried to make the team a bit more aggressive and a bit more no nonsense. So I don't want to be pessimistic at all. But for me, I'm not going to be happy, but I'm not going to be annoyed if we keep it at two now. You lose. Nobody expects you to win. Your goal difference is still healthy-ish, move on. Uh, Chelsea need to win this game, quite quite, quite frankly. Uh, be a good atmosphere, Leeds and Chelsea always is, but I think Chelsea is strong because I think that there's a lot of people jabbing them, saying they need to make certain signings and why isn't Pulisic getting in this team and has Sterling made a mistake? These are all things I've seen in the last few days. You look at Leeds United, where they finished last year. You look at Chelsea, where they finished last year. Chelsea need to win this. They need to stay in and around second for as long as possible. For as long as possible. So they've got an insurance policy of eventually finishing fourth at worst. But it's going to be a tough old season for them. Tottenham have improved. Arsenal have improved. Um so there's two teams, um, sorry, there's three teams that can only go for two places. And you look at from last season, Arsenal have brought in the players that I mentioned before. Tottenham have had a full pre-season under Antonio Conte and brought in, you'll remember the discussion, maybe not headliners, but they've brought in good squad players like Bissouma, like Perisic, Fraser Forster in the dressing room, players that will really help them get over the line. Whereas you look at Chelsea and you think, okay, Sterling's come in, absolutely wonderful signing. Kukurea they signed when they didn't need him, so I'm not quite sure why they did that. Lukaku's gone. Werner is gone. Koulibaly comes in with Silva, okay. Rudiger's gone, massive hole. Have they improved? I don't know if they have. I think it's. I actually think this is going to be. Let's hope Sterling can do something. Otherwise, we're in trouble. But yeah, I I do think Chelsea will win. Um, but yeah, Leeds, just please try keep it respectful, please. Right, West Ham, Brighton. God, Mays will be licking his lips at this. His boys, West Ham versus his favourite team ever, Brighton. Um, <laughs> well, I, I I've I've taken a great degree of pleasure, a great degree of pleasure looking at West Ham. Losing to City, losing to Forest. Um, I said in the predictions, I think West Ham will have a bad season compared to last. I'm not saying that they'll have a, a like a terrible season. I just think they'll be eighth, ninth, tenth. Um, I just, I think they had their chance to get fourth last year. They should have got fourth. It was set up for them to get fourth, and and they haven't. I mean, for me, losing against City again, you're expecting that. Forest, you need to win that. You need to win that. If you're going to get 
European football. Like they're going to have to make that result up elsewhere now for me. Um, you can go, it's just a, a slight one. And it, it, it might be, it might end up being completely irrelevant. But Brighton isn't an easy place to go by a long way. I think with with um, West Ham, I'm looking at that and thinking, who have, who have they signed that's really changed it? Uh, Skamaka or Samaka, forgive me on the pronunciation there, is either going to be brilliant or he's going to be terrible. He's either, he's either going to be Antonio or Simone Zaza. And we all remember Simone Zaza at West Ham. Timo Kerr has come today from uh, somewhere in the Bundesliga. No, he's come from Paris Saint-Germain. Sorry, I'm thinking old FIFA's on career mode. Um, but yeah, again, decent signing. Decent signing for them, but... Again, I don't think they've made a big step forward. I think they've taken a little step forward, which is fine. That's absolutely fine if they're content to finish where I've said that I think they will. But if they did want to get six fifth and up they I, th- I think they needed a bit more there I think they need a bit more muscle um as for Brighton I mean I said it with 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 Scotting that a Trossard is different mustard man he is absolutely class Trossard is class like when I'm looking at, at, at teams who are all about doing stuff like I know they don't really need him but your Spurs and your Chelsea and especially your Arsenal I go after him I honestly would. I, Tr- Trossard, I think, is different gravy, mate. He's mustard. Re- I really like him. I've always liked him. He comes over to Brighton and everyone goes, who is he? Who is he? Who is he? Where's he come from? Why isn't he in the England squad? Well, if people educated themselves outside of the Sky Sports bubble, they might realise that there's a whole host of other leagues out there with very, very good players. Uh, Trossard obviously being one and he's showing it. Brighton, fantastic start to the season against Man United. Fantastic start. Even though that, even though that 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 sort of two ones to Brighton has featured quite a lot in recent history, I don't think anyone gave them a chance. Um, but yeah, don't get me wrong, Man United aren't great, but you've got to give respect to where it's due. Newcastle, Nick Pope, absolute stormer, absolute stormer from Pope that ended up meaning that Newcastle got out of there alive. They were unlucky, Brighton. I think they play like that eight eight times out of ten. They, they get the win there. But I'm looking at this game against West Ham. And I think it'd be a good game. I think it'd be a draw. I'm going to go 2-2. I'm going to go 2-2. I think that West Ham could really do with the win. But I think Brighton are, are just too confident and too on it at the moment to allow themselves not to leave the game without something. Uh, Newcastle Man City, that'll be 5-0 City. Um, back in the day, this would be the fixture. Will it be the it'd be City at home? It'd be uh, the Etihad, sorry. Um, that would be Sergio Aguero, triple captain. Once, I think, no, twice he scored five. Five. I think once he was like a 95-point captain. Like, I think it was like five goals and three assists. It'd be cr- something ludicrous. Um, Newcastle aren't, aren't going to expect anything from this game. I think they've, they've quietly kept themselves under the radar. That win against Forest, they needed it because you're looking at the game against Brighton. They get out of their alive. Good performance from Pope, and that's why they signed him. And I'm sure a Newcastle fan would throw that back in my face. But lose to City, which I fully expect them to. You're then looking at Wolves away, followed by Liverpool away. And then the game after that, you're then looking at, oh, good grief. Palace at home, so you can easily see like they're not fixtures where you look at it and you go Newcastle definitely going to win that. So it was very, 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 very important for them that they got the win against Forest, which they did. So I don't think I can say much more on them. Um, City have been handed a golden opportunity by Liverpool, a golden, golden, golden opportunity. I mean, let's just let's just just humour this, just humour it. Let's say something happens and Man United come out the blocks on Monday. Liverpool come out the blocks as well. And let's just say it's nil-nil or it's 1-1, right? And City beat Newcastle. That is then Liverpool 3, City 9. They're six points ahead of them, three games into the season. Now, on the one hand, you're going, well, three games, there's 35 left, plenty of time. But on the other, you're going at it and the media and me will be saying City are away. 
City are away. So I really, really do feel that Manchester City will win this, should win this, will do it comprehensively. But if I was a Liverpool fan, I'd be, I'd be. This is probably the most worried I'd be for, for, for the Man United game in in, in quite some time. Uh, but City have started the season exceptionally, as you would expect. Haaland, I had question marks over him. I did, I did, I did. I'll hold my hands up and say that I didn't think he'd be. I did. Well, I'm not going to say he was going to. He wasn't going to be a Stevan Jovetic or an Agredo. He wasn't going to be that player. But I thought he was. He was going to be much more of a. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 goals his first season. To be fair, I had it encountered that he'd be rotated, but he's, you know, I mean, against Bournemouth, he wasn't great for those of us who have him in the fantasy team, but he's shown, like against West Ham, he's shown his intelligence, he's shown his tenacity. Um, if Haaland should be really, really geared up for this, thinking I could get a few goals today. Last, and at the moment, least, Manchester United versus Liverpool on the Monday. Man United, here we are again. Um, what what can you say, guys? That hasn't already been said. What can you say? I mean, I'm I'm absolutely loving this for years, for years and years and years. They were untouchable, and everyone has to say that on the pitch and off the pitch. On the pitch. Um, ridiculous all going all the way back to Cantona York Cole Pallister Butt Bex Skulls Giggs Keane move into the next one Solskjaer Van Nistelrooy Ferdinand Neville Rooney Ronaldo Tevez Nani Vidic Evra, all these players, Van der Sar, even at a time, even at a time, you're thinking Hernandez, Rooney, Van Persie, and I've mentioned Rooney, but he was such a feature in so many teams. Like, it's the fact they were winning leagues with Anderson and Tom Cleverley in centre mid. Like, they were untouchable on the pitch. Off the pitch, Ferguson bullied journalists, not just him, bullied journalists, had the media in his pocket. Some would say he had the referees in his pocket. Um, everyone was scared to go after him. He was being praised left, right and centre. And I mean, I just never thought it would get this bad in my lifetime. And I'm really, really pleased it has because they're not they're, they're not the most unbearable set, but they're the most arrogant they're one of the most entitled in terms of just thinking, saying we're Man United, we're Man United, we're Man United four times means that, that they'll just start winning again. Um, as I've said, I was I thought it was just ludicrous that they lose a game and Gary Neville goes, the time has come. The time has come to sell the club. As if that's going to make a difference. Like, don't get me wrong, Redknapp trying, Jamie Redknapp mentioning to him about, um, I'm sure everyone's seen, Redknapp mentioning to him about the players needing to take responsibility. I, I do get Neville's point where he goes, they're not good enough and the money hasn't actually been put in by the Glazers. They've just used the turnover from Man United. So they haven't added anything and a club of this side needs. And I get that. And in some ways, I agree with him. But for me, you can use that excuse when it's City, Liverpool, Arsenal. Tottenham, etc., etc., etc. You can't use that excuse when it's Brighton and Brentford. They're games you need to win, or you need to at least be competitive in. And they weren't competitive in either of them. They weren't competitive in either of them. The thing is, they're gonna. They're, they're, there's there's no no issue on this. After last year, I think it was five 0 by Liverpool. No Man United fans expecting anything. Um, so I just I, I'm I'm just I'm a little bit fed up really of. Of, of it always been about Man United every single every, every single week, um, and I'm a little bit annoyed that people just get that like they just oh God it it just feels like the airtime that's given to teams. I think on the one hand it takes away from Liverpool and Manchester City, Chelsea. And at times Tottenham and Arsenal for how well they're doing, because it's always about Man United. 
the t- for teams in the mid table having a, a really good season. You look at last year, yes, you look at West Ham and you think, well, they didn't get anywhere near the airtime. And you'll say, well, yeah, that's because they've got Manu, there's Manu Pundits and Manu are a massive club. And I get all that. I do get all that. But I don't think consistently going on about it and just standing on a cereal box, parroting the same stuff every single weekend to a load of people is productive is worthwhile or is actually entertaining so that's my say Liverpool (laughs) shocking start should have beaten Fulham should have been miles like not as in the performance beforehand should look at that and just walk through it Crystal Palace at home should just look at that walk through it they're now four points behind City Um, Jurgen Klopp can make all his excuses about the the grass being dry and, and, uh, and the rest of it but for me, I've said before, I think I think that last season, I think that was it. I don't. I, I'm not saying that they're not. They can't win anymore. I'm saying they're never getting to that level again. They're never going to get to that level again, ever. I don't think under Jurgen Klopp with that group of players. I think Mane Gerwin has now been the first player of that cohort to say, actually, I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm going to go somewhere else. There was the issue with Silla over his contract. Um, Nunez comes in, could be brilliant. Maybe so, will be. Diaz looks good, really good. I love him, Porto connection. Uh, He doesn't get anywhere near the numbers that they've lost with Mane for me. Um, Thiago, Fabinho, Henderson. I get it, they're trying to mix it up with Harvey Elliott and Fabio Carvalho. If you take those out and put those in, where does that get you? Robertson, another year older. Alexander Arnold, still exceptional, but every season there's always the question marks about his defending, which 95% of the time doesn't matter because they're so dominant. But it's those 5% margins that are against Fulham, that are against a Real Madrid in a Champions League. And that's where the questions need to be asked. Not necessarily of Arnold. But in terms of as a team, are, are, are they all the way there? Van Dijk, another year older. Matip, Canate, great players. I just don't get the same same vibes anymore, um, to be quite frank. But I think Liverpool will win this. I think it'll be... I think, I think, I think Man United will score. I think it might be 2-3-1 to Liverpool. Um, it's just not... It, funnily enough, it, it's just funny to think there's a very, very good chance that one of these teams, or even potentially both, will not have registered a win three games into the season. Um, and you, you, we've got to enjoy it, guys, while we la- while it lasts, because no doubt one of them will be having the last laugh at the end of the year, more likely Liverpool. But we've got to enjoy it while it lasts. So that's it, guys, for the roundup of this week. It was just me today. It was something different Um, because I'm sure it's just common sense and that's all you want. I mean, it is entertaining hearing Mays try to tell me that, you know, Harvey Barnes is better than Johan Cruyff or something like that. Or, you know, how Mason Mount's amazing because he scored three goals against Norwich. But sometimes you just need the facts and and that's all I try to give. And it's honesty. Again, that's all that I try to give. Um, Should have said at the start, but please do follow us on Twitter. Um, obviously like the video, subscribe to the channel if you can. Um, just want to say, I didn't know this. So I'm going to say that if you like a video on YouTube, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. All it, well, it does. But what I mean is it doesn't really change anything for you. It just means that the video will get more circulation out there. So you might think there might be someone else who wants to listen to a really miserable 25 year old in his flat on a Thursday night, whinging about you know, 11 millionaires chasing a football. And you might think, yeah, send send them his way. Be good if you could. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much for your time, guys, as always. Um, and, yeah, have a great weekend. Bon diaccio.